a good break in the U.S.? I did. Which place did you go again? Uh, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, where oh, my parents yeah. live. Interesting. Yes, good, good. the land of country music. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think I know much about okay. that, but uh, I'm sure it's something that uh, you probably know. Uh, anyway, uh, we wanted to discuss more about um, Christianity and Islam. Yeah. Yes. So, no country music? Not my... No country music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not my field. I won't get so, the car. I, so, yeah. Um, you had a few questions you wanted to ask. You might want to start with that, perhaps. Yeah, I think there's one actually main question, yeah. which is what um, historical grounds, ex extra Quranic manuscript grounds, do you have to believe that Quran 4:157 is a historical account of the crucifixion event? Yes. Uh, first and foremost, we do not rely on extra Quranic evidences. I mean, unless it's come from the Prophet Sallallahu Yes. So for us, the historic events historic data is something that is itself not reliable because you know there are many things in history that got basically twisted and changed and so on yes um, so if I asked you who were the eyewitnesses for the crucifixion what are their names and who was the first one to record their that particular event from eyewitness accounts would you be able to identify those oh I'm sure I could well name me one eyewitness that has right. written an account about the crucifixion oh that is written can Exactly. But there were eyewitnesses. Well, I can say that there were eyewitnesses to many things, yes? Of course. But if I can't bring the evidence, like if I can't substantiate it with evidence, that is just a claim. Sure. You see what I mean? Sure. And the same applies to crucifixion. Sure. Because if the crucifixion did happen, first and foremost, what is, the mo what is important about crucifixion to you as a Christian? To me as a Christian, it is just pretty much the crux, no pun intended, of the Christian message. Yeah, but what is... What is the significance of the crucifixion in your belief? In my belief, it's yeah. just an accurate account of what happened to Jesus in Nazareth. Yeah, but what is the significance of the crucifixion itself? I'm not talking about whether the, whether the crucifixion happened or not. Okay, yeah. let's say for the sake of argument that it did happen. Okay. I'm asking you, what is the significance of the actual event of the crucifixion for a Christian? For a Christian in general or me? For Christianity, for Christendom. Um, it is an accurate, or it is what they claim God did. Just they to claim, not Christians claim to. that God suffered on their behalf. That yeah, but it. why? God well, suffered? Yes. At the hands of his own creation? Yes, that is the Christian claim. Why is that? Why did he have to suffer at the hands of his creation? Why did he have to? He yeah. didn't have to. Okay, so could he have forgiven you without the crucifixion? Um, you know, I can't speak on his behalf. That'd be really blasphemous. Uh, I just know what did happen. Okay, so... The Bible says there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Sure. Do you believe that? I, I generally believe what is said in the Bible. Well, did Jesus not say that he can forgive sins? Um, he never said, I can forgive sins. He told people their sins were forgiven. Which means he's able to forgive sins. Uh, you could infer this. So if Jesus is able to forgive sins, then was there a need for him to die for your sins to be forgiven? If Jesus was able to forgive sins, was there a need for him to die? Uh, yes, because the Bible teaches that he forgives the sins of the whole world. So. No, but that's what I'm saying. If he was able to forgive without bloodshed, wouldn't that be a better uh, solution to atonement rather than having to go through this painful death in order for him to forgive or atone for the sins of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. If so, he's able yeah, to yeah, forgive yeah. you, then there's no need for bloodshed. That's what I'm trying to ask. Sure, sure, sure. So you have to understand that the Christian belief is not just about personal forgiveness of, of daily sins. It is about God reconciling his uh, creation to himself, who is now separated uh, because, of, because of sin. Does that make sense? So First John it says, he's the propitiation for our sins not only ours, but the whole world. And then in Romans 8, it talks about how the entire creation is groaning, longing for this reconciliation with God. Yeah, so in, in other words, you're basically telling me that there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Like it says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, which is exactly the question I'm asking, that if, if this is a necessity for God to come as a man and to die for the sins, yes? Whereas in Islam... It's our necessity. No, no, if God is able to forgive without shedding of blood, okay. then it would be so. However, in Christianity, he couldn't do that. Hence, it says in Hebrews 9.22, that's, that, that's not a Christian claim. Either. Well, it says in the Bible, there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of whose blood? It doesn't say that. It says without the No, but you tell me. You, you understand the Bible, right? Whose blood is, is being addressed here? 
That is a general statement. That it's not a general not statement. The entire chapter of Hebrews 9, it talks about the atonement. It's yes. not just a general statement. It tells you why they moved away, or rather they, this um, uh, practice of sacrifices of the animals is no more. Now Jesus right. has yep. taken upon the sin yep. of the world. Yep. And this sacrifice, this bloodshed is actually the blood of Jesus that is being uh, implied here. So that statement is making a theological claim that God does not forgive without the shedding. Exactly my point. So, so the yeah. question is, so I don't know if you're understanding the contrast I'm trying to build here. So in Islam, Allah is able to forgive sins. Allah is able to punish the sinner as well. So both the aspects are there. Yes. The aspect of forgiveness, yep. because Allah says he's Gafur al-Rahim, which means he's uh, the one who is forgiving and the most merciful. Yep. Yes, so this is these are the attributes of Allah. Yes. He's able to exercise this um, this right of his to forgive and to punish as as he sees by his own wisdom, sure. which is right. Sure. Yes, so he's able to do that. Allah does not require the blood of either an animal or a man like Jesus Christ. Yes, however, in Christianity, it's not the same. In no, Christianity, no, no, no. there is no forgiveness. The Bible says okay. there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. So shedding of blood is compulsory. In other words, it's, it's conditional to shed blood in order for uh, the, the blood of the innocent like Jesus and the animals in the previous, uh, what do you say, uh, in the Old Testament in Leviticus. So in Islam, there is no bloodshed required. There is no blood of an animal or a human. Allah is able to do this by his own ability, by his attributes. Cool. I agree. Yes. So, don't you see this nature of being, or, or rather, a condition for God that He has to shed blood in order for you him to forgive you? Don't you think that seems a bit inappropriate to someone who is considered to be the most merciful? That He would allow not only, uh, basically, not only um, show His injustice by killing an innocent man for the sins of others, which is basically what happened during the crucifixion. Correct me if I'm misrepresenting uh, your faith you are but it's okay. if no no it's not okay if no, i'm misrepresenting i want you to correct me okay that's so, what i would do if you were misrepresenting islam can i speak yes go on, go on. no christian says that god was required to shed his blood it was his choice hebrews 9 22 does say that there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood that means this is a condition do you build your entire theology off of one quran verse or no no i can show you many other verses how many do you need so <laughs> no, no, how many do you need for me to convince you that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness in your, in your own Bible? And this is not only in the New Testament, also in the Old Testament. That's fine. Yes, but in the Old Testament, it was mainly relegated to unconditional sins. But that is not a statement of the need of God to forgive. God doesn't have to forgive. It God is doesn't a need to have... the means of forgiveness. Isn't God forgiving? Uh, God, does, God does not... Re do you require a lot to forgive you or is it by His grace alone? No, no, when you say require, I mean it is His ability to forgive. Does God have the... In other words, sure, I'm asking, I'm asking, is God able to forgive you without the shedding of blood? Um, God is able... Yeah, He's able to do whatever He wants. Then why the need for shedding blood? Because I'm trying to figure out why is shedding of blood so important in the Christian doctrine of atonement? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why does God need this as a condition that in unless the blood of an innocent person like Jesus Christ is shed, you won't be forgiven. That's what I'm trying to figure out from this entire crucifixion uh, event that happened and that is so important sure. to all Christians because I've even heard some Christians tell me that this event of the crucifixion and resurrection is more important than even the Trinity. It is. Yes? <laughs> well, there you go. So if it is that important, I'm asking you, why is it conditional for God to shed blood? Because that's what he says. There is no forgiveness without I, the shedding of blood. Say. To me, that seems like a condition. But that's that's not a condition saying God needs to shed blood. It's saying this is how God has dictated it to be. It's saying this is the means by which God forgives sinners. Yeah, but why blood shedding? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why do you think that God needs to shed the blood of an innocent? Not even the person who committed the crime or the sin. God doesn't need anything. You keep saying, why does God need? He doesn't need anything. It's about what he chose to do. But it's do. a condition he's made, right? No, no, no. Okay, did God need to, let me ask you this, could God forgive you without becoming a man and without killing his own self? Yes. Yes? Yes. Then what is the need for him? Why the need for him to do so? Then? Why, why do you keep assuming that the one and only true God has a need? Because that's what happened in your faith. That's what happened in your we doctrine. don't say that he needed to do that. Okay, so then the, the whole purpose of the crucifixion is now irrelevant then. If he's able to forgive you without the crucifixion, then the crucifixion is not really that important. 
See what I mean? You can't have it both ways. One way, one time, sure can. One, in one, uh, uh, sorry, in, um, in one breath you're saying this is so important, it's more important than the Trinity, and then you're saying there's not really a need even for this. You can't have it both ways. Either this is conditional sure. or not conditional. Conditional upon whom? Based, or God? based on God. God says there is no forgiveness. Okay. When God says there is no forgiveness, who is the one saying this? There is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Who's saying this? Is it God or is it somebody else? God is saying that. Good. So God has made this condition, hasn't he? Yes, to humans. Yes. Yeah. Not on himself. Of course. Yeah. Of course, it's a condition to forgive humans, not to forgive no, no, himself. No, no, no. He's saying, this is the way I chose to forgive you, by shedding the blood. Not because I need to, yeah. this is how I chose it. So in order for him to shed blood, he had to become a man. Sure. Okay, so it is, that's what I'm saying. These are all contingent for him, for Not this. For him, okay, for was God Almighty, I don't know if you know, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to understand this. You believe in the Godhead? The, the triune Godhead? I believe in God. Yeah, I know, but according to you, what is God? God. Yeah, what's God? A definition is not the definition itself. So if I asked you what oh, I is... I forgot I'd say it is. Well, you, did God describe himself in the Bible? Sure. Good. What is that description? Jesus. Carry on. Where does it say God is Jesus in the Bible? No, 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 I didn't say God is Jesus. I but said, that's what I asked you. I said, no, you asked where the description is. Yeah. I said the description is Jesus. And the Bible is very clear about that. So is, is the description of God the same description that of Jesus? That's a nonsensical statement. No, I'm, I'm asking you. It's not a statement. It's a question. Try to understand the difference sure, between a statement an and question. a question. It's an okay. Question. Why is it an absurd question? You, I asked you what is the definition of God in the Bible. You said Jesus. You said then, how does God describe himself in the Bible? And I said Jesus. Okay. Can you show me the words where his description is mentioned in the Bible? Hebrews 1.3. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. Therefore, Jesus, the man, is the description of what God is like. Okay. So God is a man. That's your conclusion. I'm asking you. Is God a man? That's your conclusion. It's a question, brother. Do you not understand the difference between a statement and a question? Is God a man? Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of God's nature. I didn't Jesus, hear the word man or not man. You asked for how the, how the Bible... No, I asked you, is God a man? Taking it back to your original question, how does the Bible describe God? Yeah, go on. The Bible says Jesus is the perfect example of what God is like. Good, so God is a man. The Bible doesn't say that. So God is not a man. I not say that either. So what is God then? If he's not a man, he's a man. Actually, the Bible does say he's not a man. Sure, you're going to prove that number where it says God is not a man, that he should lie. I know, I get it. No, no, I'm not, I'm not even going to use that. I'm going to use a different one. Oh, okay. Well, Hebrew, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's actually Hosea 11.9. Cool. You, you know what that is? Quote it to me. You know okay. it? It says basically God is not a man. Basically, what does it say for Oh, really? You got a Bible on you? Read it. I give you the you're reference. Bring, bring it to me. Hosea 11:9. Uh -huh. Read it. If you read want. it. I don't care, but you can read it. What do you mean you don't care? You can read it. Why is it so defensive? I don't understand. I thought you wanted to ask me a question before I came to, in front of the cameras. I asked. I'm out. I'm giving you the reference. I'm giving you the Bible verses. I asked you, is God a man? The Bible clearly states he's not a man. Now, whether you want to believe the Bible verses or not, that's up to you. Cool. But the Bible clearly states it's not a man. So, so you've does now, Drew you've now say... I've taken it from my original question, which is, as an outsider to Islam, what historical grounds do I have to believe that Quran 4157 is a historical I already answered that question at the very beginning. I no, said, we said, don't rely on history, okay. we rely on the Quran. So then I, I don't need to seek Islam because I, rely, I, I want to know what really happened. Do you rely on history? Yes. So if a history says something... For example, the history. Really wait, wait. Happened. For example, in history, like you said, no one recorded the eyewitness account of Jesus Christ being, uh, mm -hmm. cru being crucified. Then you have no grounds even from oh, the basis really? of history. Really? Well, I'm asking you. Do you have any? Bring it forth then. Bring forth your evidence of the crucifixion. Really? Yes, really. That was your question. Let's see if you stand by your own principles of historic evidence. Yes. Do you have any? Um, all, all of the basically two thousand years of. Give me one example from a historian, which is, a, which is an eyewitness account. Bart Ehrman believes that the crucifixion occurred. Yes or no? Bart Ehrman says the resurrection didn't happen. Do you believe that? I'm not talking about the resurrection. But I'm saying if everything is based on history, then you don't just look at one aspect. Look, what you're doing now is Bart Ehrman says many things. For example, Bart Ehrman doesn't believe Jesus is the Son of God. Bart Ehrman doesn't believe the resurrection happened. Bart Ehrman doesn't believe the Bible is something which is. Uh, uh, credible. I'm aware. Yes. So what you're doing is you're you're using one aspect of Bart Ehrman that he, he says, okay, from the historic evidence, which is basically from the Bible and so on. Yes. It's not basically from the Bible. Well, even from extra Bible. What is the evidence Bart Ehrman gave? Let's see if you've researched that. Let's see if I have researched the evidence yeah. that Bart Ehrman gave. Yeah. 
non sure. non biblical evidence, historic evidence. Sure, um, it's probably based on the plenty of extra biblical sources that say that Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah, which is what? What do you mean, which is what? Which evidence is that? Non extra, non non biblical evidence. Yeah, you know, because I've already. Told no, no, it's not me. It's for you no, to you know, because you you, you mentioned Bart Ehrman. You're trying to make an example of me. I've already told you. No, privately. you said Bart Ehrman I've said, but you don't know. Before you privately, and you're trying to make a public example. So what do you want? To what do you mean public example of you? You're the one who used this principle as a basis of your evidence no, no, no. that your evidence know, is based on extra biblical atheistic scholarship confirms the crucifixion but islamic belief denies it that's all i want to know are you saying all atheists actually accept a hundred percent no <laughs> then which atheists accept other than bart the Ehrman? wide consensus of scholars but give I'm, me a give me a name asking, other than bart i'm asking on what grounds you deny their consensus i told you that if you have evidence on what grounds do you deny wait a minute I'm, i've already no. told you i've already yeah, told you once no. that you don't have any evidence of a eyewitness account or Account from a historian who is based on an eyewitness. So you can tell me now if I you don't have it. Well, you, you ask me for a answer. question. You ask me a question. Allow me to answer. You're not answering. I am. If you're listening to me, I'm actually answering it. You're not answering my original question. Your original question is what I'm answering. I said if you have, if you base your evidence on historical evidence, then we don't even have that, because if you had historical evidence, you would quote to me the actual historian who who recorded this. No, no, wait, not, wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. If you're able to quote to me. You're not answering my question. The, well, if you listen, you, you will understand that, that I'm actually answering it. Now, if you want to keep repeating yourself, it's up to you. But go home and watch this video, and you'll understand that I'm actually answering the very question that you asked. Okay? If you have even the name of a historian who based his account on histor on eyewitness account, then please bring forth. Because so far, you haven't done. You have quoted someone like Bart Ehrman, but you haven't given what he based his evidence on. Sure. Am I right? You haven't given that. And you haven't answered my question. Why do you believe 4157 is accurate according to history? I never said it's according to history. I've already told you. How many times do you have to repeat this? So Drew. you have no, you have two and Drew, outsider. Drew, have I not told you it's not based on history? So, so it's not based on history. Did I not it's say to you that it's okay. based, the Quran is based on the testimony of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who okay. got his revelation from, and the, from Allah. Prove it. Prove what? Prove that he got his revelation from Allah. For me to prove to you? Bring forward evidence. Okay, the, the evidence is this. The Quran says, if this is from anyone other than Allah, then you find a contradiction in it. I found one, 4157. It's not a contradiction. Nobody, you you... nobody believes that Jesus wasn't crucified. Nobody? nobody in I believe that he wasn't crucified. Nobody, nobody <laughs> All these Muslims believe he wasn't crucified. <laughs> the Jews don't even believe that he's, he's a Messiah. What does that mean? Does it mean he's not a Messiah? Nobody so your historic body. evidence is nowhere, okay? Your, no your, historian denies the crucifixion of Jesus. No historian? No reputable historian denies the crucifixion. Give me a name of a reputable historian who actually accepts it. I've given you two. I've given you one. Bar based on John what? Dominic Cross, he wasn't a... Of none of them were eyewitnesses. So what is your evidence based on? None of them are eyewitnesses. A That's historian has to base it either at least on a... Well, then take it up with Bart Ehrman. Why should you take it up? You're the one who brought it up. I'm asking, the onus is on you to bring me the evidence you, which Bart Ehrman used. Okay, anyway, look. Proof 4157. Even Jesus himself. I don't have to prove to you anything. The Quran well, is something. The Quran is. Wait, wait. For me, the Quran. Good. Okay, so this is what happens. You know, when we ask them for historic evidence, they run away. Yes, they say, Bar Ehrman, this, Bar Ehrman, this. There are many things that Bar Ehrman doesn't actually believe in. The reason he actually left Christianity is because of this. That it doesn't actually tell you with history, it doesn't tell you with rationality, it doesn't tell you with many other things. He says that the, the Bible itself has so many. What do you say? Errors in it. The New Testament has as many contradictions in the manuscript evidences as there are words in the Bible. Now, what does it tell us when you have so many contradictions, when you have so many contradictory accounts within the Bible itself? Yes, this is the same historian who's telling you that these contradictions occur in that same New Testament that you want to rely the crucifixion on. The very same historian you're using is actually denying that this is an accurate account of history. Now, if you want to play this double standards, no wonder he ran away. Because when I actually questioned him as to who are the eyewitnesses and who are the historians who recorded it. Because people like Josephus, which they quote many times, I'm surprised he didn't actually quote that. Maybe he didn't even research it properly. That's why he was unable to give me even a single name of a historian from the early uh, history of, uh, of um, uh, since, since Jesus Christ. The evidence that Josephus has is basically from the 9th century. The manuscripts that, that, that do exist, that are extant, is basically very late. It's not from the early times, from the first century. In fact, they do not have a single manuscript of the New Testament from the first century. From the second century, they have a few fragments. Yes, 
Bart Ehrman himself said that 97% of the New Testament is from after the 9th century. Now that, that really, really tells you a lot about the credibility of the Bible that he bases it on. Yes? That Drew or any other Christian bases, bases this particular fact on. That when you actually observe the evidence, then you don't find any. And the reason you don't find any is because this is written by many unknown authors. Yes? These authors we don't even know the names of. In fact, our hadith, even the weakest of hadith, has a chain of narration. Within the chain of narration, every person, we know the biography of that person. It's called Ilm al-Rijal. Yes? So we have a very methodical, methodic, uh, methodic, <laughs> methodological way of ascertaining that we actually verify everything before we claim this hadith is authentic or whether it is daif, it is weak, or it is maudu, it is fabricated. Our ulama, our scholars have actually gone through this uh, science. It's actually called ulum al-hadith, the science of hadith. Now, it's, it's, it is so strange that if one person in the chain of narration, yes, they say that Bukhari came 200 years after, so what? Yes, we have a chain of narration which links from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the way to Bukhari. Some of the chains are as short as three or four members between Bukhari and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, now this tells us that there is a method to this particular uh, verification and that's why it's called a science. It's called a science of, the, of, of, of hadith. What do the Christians have? They do not have any manuscripts. They do not even have an oral tradition. You know many of how these hadiths actually came from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to uh, 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 the people who collected them, like Bukhari and Muslim, uh, Rahimullah. The, it came to them through oral testimony. And this oral testimony is something that has been verified. The people who actually narrated this hadith, they were verified. Each and every member within the chain was verified. Like if that person was old and his memory was something which basically uh, was lacking, that means he used to forget things. So sometimes he would say something which are correct and some things which are incorrect. Then that person, that, that particular hadith would be graded as weak because they cannot rely on this person just because he had a lapse of memory. Yes? Or a person was a habitual liar. Yes? Or a person was someone who was unreliable, for example. All these factors were taken into consideration when a particular hadith was classified as sahih, authentic, or weak, daif, or fabricated maudu. And this is something which is not done with the text of the Bible. So even our weakest hadith have a chain of narration. Their word of God does not have any such chain. So there is no oral transmission. There is no written records of a manuscript. What is it based on then? What exactly is it based on? Your extant manuscript like Bar Roman says 97% or 94, 96, whatever it is. Yes, of those, most of them date to 9th century and beyond. What happened to the first 9 centuries? First 800 years, where are those manuscripts? Yes, if only 6% of your biblical um, manuscripts happen to be from the early centuries, then what happened to the 96, sorry, the 94% of the rest of the Bible? It is from the late century. Now, how do we fill up this gap of nearly 900 years, 800 years? How do we fill that gap up? No oral tradition, no chain of narration, no manuscript evidence. How do we fill that gap? That's for the New Testament. You know, for the Old Testament, I think it's even worse. Because for the Old Testament, the earliest extant manuscript happened to be the Dead Sea Scrolls, or scrolls which basically date to more than 11 to 1200 years after Moses. Yes? So both Old Testament and New Testament have got a void basically of a millennia. Yes? Less or more or less. With the Quran, alhamdulillah, we not only have the chain of revelation, yes, the chain of uh, narration for the hadith and the chain of uh, revelation for the, for the Quran, yes, the chain of transmission for the Quran, we have the actual manuscripts from the first century al Hijra. Yes, not a few of them, nearly the entire Quran manuscripts can be found along with the oral tradition. So, mashallah, we have got both historic evidence plus the evidence from the testimony with reliable chain of transmission the Christians and the Jews they don't have the same they cannot say the same 
to say this was transmitted reliably. How can we know that these authors, whose name we don't even know, yes, they were faithful in transmitting the record of Moses or Jesus over all these years, over eight, nine hundred years, or in the case of the Old Testament, more than eleven to twelve hundred years. How can we say that? There is no real evidence. So anyone who depends on history need to first check whether their own scripture is something which stand the test, the standard test of verification through history. Because the Quran, alhamdulillah, can pass that test easily. Our hadith can pass that test easily. But the, Quran, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Bible cannot. And anyone who says that God requires a sacrifice of an animal or a man, yes, is only deluded deluded because God doesn't need anyone God is not contingent God is not someone who depends on anyone he's independent yes in surah al-ikhlas Allah says Qul ahad, ahad, Allahu samad. what does mean a samad means means he is self-sufficient he doesn't rely on anyone yes he's independent of any need or anyone yes this is beautifully stated in only one chapter of the Quran chapter 112 yes and this is ayah number one and two 112 one and two that Allah Samad, that He is someone who is self-sufficient. Alhamdulillah, we have the answers in the Quran. Yes, we don't have to go and look in history. But even if we use history, the Quran still stands out. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.